my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video tutorial on how to design for FFF 3D printing. I hope you enjoyed my previous video on how to unblock nozzles. If you haven't seen it, you can check out in the link in the description. Today I will be going over the design principles of FFF 3D printing. You should always keep these design principles in mind in order to get the best results from your prints. And you should also start thinking about how the part will be printed before you begin designing. The most common file type to use is the STL file format, which can be easily created with almost every 3D modeling software package. There are several professional software packages that can all export the required STL format. In this case, we are using Autodesk Inventor. FFF 3D printing comes with its own specific set of design rules. There are many optimizations possible to make printing easier, quicker, and to improve the overall success rate of the printed part. Many designs for 3D printed parts are actually designed for a different manufacturing technique. You can see here how the model has been designed differently for 3D printing compared to injection moulding. Printing models that are originally created for injection moulding on an FFF printer will not deliver an optimal result. So bear in mind that although the part may seem rather basic, it may still be quite challenging to print. When you're designing an object for an FFF machine, please take the printer you use into account Optimization should be based on printer specifications like nozzle diameter, layer height and print speed. A printer does continuous movements in the X and Y direction, but layers in the Z direction are separate. As you can see here, the Z direction is the weakest part of the print. By changing the design or print orientation, you can make sure loading will occur in a way that is optimal for the print. Two large overhangs in your design can be hard to print on an FFF machine. It's safe to say that 45 degrees is the maximum printing overhang angle without the need for support. Some features in the design can minimise the need for support, which saves time and material, as you can see by the ribs on this design. The support is no longer needed. Compared to injection moulding, you're not bound to the limitations of mould design. Walls do not need draft angles and mould clearance. To increase the strength of a particular wall, you can increase the number of outlines within the slicer or increase the level of infill without the need for changing the design of the model. It is impossible to show you everything on 3D model design in just one video. However, I hope this video helps you to improve your designing skills for 3D printing. Just remember that you can gain a lot by optimizing your prints. Please subscribe to our channel if you don't want to miss out on any of our next videos. They will be about tips and tricks, printing problems, new filaments, if you have any questions or topics you would like me to address, please leave a comment down below. See you in the next one. BASF. We create chemistry.